We're open seven days a week. Uh, Monday through Saturday, we're open 9.30 to 5. And Sunday, we're open 1 to 5. So uh, today, I'm going to talk about an animal that's kind of a fun one. Uh, we're going to talk about the woolly rhino. So the woolly rhino was an animal that lived during the last ice age in Europe and Asia. And we're still kind of figuring out why it went extinct. And it can also give us a bit of insight into modern day rhinos in a few ways. And demonstrates a few uh, rules of biology that I think are important to go over that we haven't talked about yet. So we're first going to just go over the taxonomy of the animal really quick like we do normally. So they are from the order Perissodactyla, which are the odd-toed ungulates or hooved animals. Uh, stuff like horses are in that group as well, and tapirs. Uh, they're in the family Rhinoceridae. Uh, or right, wait. Rhinoceridae. Um, my Latin's terrible, as we have found out over this. And that used to be a larger family of animals than it is today. Oh, uh, they're in the genus, uh, let's see, Celodonta, which is talking about uh, part of their tooth. And their species is Antiquitus. They are, and that's where we're going to narrow down and talk about this specific animal. So the woolly rhino, as it's commonly referred to, lived from 3.6 million years ago to just about 10,000 years ago. It was a very recent extinction. They lived in Eurasia, so were quite quite common animal, actually, at the time. And they could be anything from 10 to 12 feet long, about 6, 6 and a half feet at the shoulder, uh, which, for reference, I am 6'2", and these things would have been just a little bit taller than me. They could have weighed upwards of 2 tons, up to 4,400 pounds. And they were quite hairy. Um, that's kind of where they get the name. They're woolly. And then they also had, much like modern African rhinoceros, two horns, one smaller and one larger horn. And now we can go over a bit of their biology. So woolly rhinos were herbivores, like modern rhinoceros. That's not a huge surprise there, hopefully. And their diet uh, varied from grasses and sedges to kind of woody plants and mosses and flowers and such. Uh, given certain specimens, we can actually tell vaguely what they ate throughout the year. Their diet probably consisted in the summer of more grazing, while in winter and fall, it probably was more browsing. Uh, which is kind of cool seeing an animal switch between those two. The hair on these animals would have been a reddish-brown color and a double-coated um, coat of fur with two layers of distinct lengths, which could trap basically a layer of insulating air between them to keep an animal warm in cold weather. They tended to have shorter proportional limbs than modern rhinoceros from warmer climates. So a little bit stubbier legs, a stubbier tail, smaller ears. And they had a very large pronounced shoulder hump, which may have been used to support their head and that massive horn on the front. And they had very long heads, even for rhinos, and the snout slightly pointed down which probably made it a little bit easier to graze um, when your mouth is already pointed a little bit downward. There was minimal sexual dimorphism. Males and females had these large horns, much like in modern rhinoceros. But that doesn't mean these weren't used for stuff like intraspecific combat. It just means that may not have been the main purpose of the large horn. They may have been using it to fend off predators or to clear away snow in the winter to get at vegetation. Um, another thing about these animals, so talking about their body proportions, so the first thing it, we're going to talk about is Bergman's rule. Bergman's rule is that the further from the equator you get in colder climates, typically, animals' body mass goes up in relation to how far away they go and how cold it is. Because in cold weather, it pays to be a bit bigger. You retain heat better. And Allen's rule is that animals in cold climates tend to have shorter appendages. So, let's say in the case of a mammoth, shorter trunks, uh, shorter legs, tails, ears, anything hanging off of you is going to be a little bit shorter to keep it a little bit closer into your, your core for your body temperature. And then we're going to talk about genetic diversity with these, and what these can tell us about modern rhinos, as a recent discovery showed something that we were not expecting. Uh, another kind of cool thing about these animals is they show up in cave art. And actually, with recent discoveries, quite a lot. We have up to about 70 drawings that we can confirm are cave rhinos. Uh, this is a replica of 
the Chauvet Rhino. You want to zoom in on this little thing so we can do it? So this is a replica of the Chauvet Rhino painting. Hey Rhinos, the Wooly Rhinos were drawn with these belts of darker fur, which given that we have some specimens that were preserved in permafrost, we can zoom out again, we know for a fact that they didn't really have, or at least the specimens we found didn't. And there could be a few explanations for that. It could have been something that happened seasonally as their coat shed into from spring to winter coat, that in one season they had this dark belt for whatever reason. And it could have been something with cave art where they might have been using that as sort of a guide for aim for this kind of dark area of the animal. It's a good place to throw a spear. But nonetheless, these rhinos were a good food source for not just our species, but also Neanderthal. Um, Neanderthal were probably quite prolific hunters of these, which we might have related in some of the injuries that we've seen on Neanderthal skeletons. Um, so, in talking about low genetic diversity, modern rhinoceros are quite well known for the fact that among their populations, there's not a lot of genetic diversity. And genetic diversity is the range of different inherited traits within a species. How many different forms of each gene are there? Are there a lot or are there a few? Um, another animal that's known for having very low genetic diversity are cheetahs. Cheetahs are a uh, modern cat that, given their species, has been very adversely hit by habitat loss. There's not a lot of them left, and they all tend to be relatively closely related. The lower the genetic diversity, the more related you are to any other given member of your species. The higher the genetic diversity, the more distantly, the more broad set of genes you got in your population. And with a recent finding of these, an examination of these woolly rhinos, they had pretty low genetic diversity, despite the fact that they had a decent population, which shows that modern rhinoceros's low genetic diversity is probably just something of a trait of rhinos, where they always tend to have, comparatively to other animals, lower populations, they breed slowly, so they might not accumulate mutations in genetic diversity as fast as other animals. And another good question is, why are these animals extinct? And obviously the answer to the question that we've kind of already done is that humans did interact with these animals quite a lot. They were a pretty good food source. Uh, the reason these went extinct is, we're, is something that's somewhat of a mystery, actually. So one thing we do know from fossil finds and generally knowing when the fossils were found and when those animals died, we can tell that these animals did really well during the slight warm periods during ice ages where there would be basically alternating slightly warmer weather, slightly cooler weather. These guys did better in the warm snaps than the cold snaps. Despite being adapted for colder weather than modern rhinos, they weren't doing what mammoths were doing where they were going into very cold areas and specializing there. These guys still need a little bit of warmth year round. Uh, one theory is that um, that last cold snap did a, a bit too much damage to their population numbers and they were not able to recover from that with the addition of human hunting in Europe and Asia. Uh, rhinos do breed relatively slowly, meaning that they don't replenish their numbers very quickly. If you kill one rhino, it takes quite a while for a new rhino to grow to be born and grow to maturity to replace that individual in the population. And the other thing is, what can they tell us about modern-day rhinos? So one thing is, first of all, is that alternating diet is something where having a broad diet is a good advantage that modern rhinos carry through today. But the other part is that low genetic diversity is a trait of these animals that we need to be aware of. For conservation, it means we have to put more effort into making sure these animals breed and get to adulthood, and to protect the animals we have from poaching and other sort of stuff like uh, like hunting or uh, pollution-based death, because each individual rhino is worth a lot to that population. Uh, again, t touching on the fact that uh, conservation should all often um, focus on these prehistoric animals a little bit and really think about why these animals aren't around, especially when they're so similar to modern ones or very close relatives, because it can help us get an insight into the modern world and into basically how we can help the animals we have. We may never be able to get the animals from the past back, but we can preserve the ones we do have. Um, so we're gonna just turn over to questions. Do any of you have any questions about these animals at all? Or anything you would like to know that I didn't cover? Um, I 
about people trying to bring back woolly mammoths through a fairly similar um, way that they did in Jurassic Park and I find yeah. that quite um haven't you watched the movie people well that's one where again, it's a movie. yeah so one of the things with bringing back extinct animals there's a few ways theoretically to do it they have yet to actually do this but the other thing is bringing back the mammoths what they're going to be doing is trying to basically inseminate a female Asian elephant with uh, basically what they can cobble together of a male woolly mammoth's uh, reproductive basically material and it's not technically going to be a mammoth um, it's going to be a hybrid and the thing is it's also an issue of these animals don't necessarily have the ecosystems they once lived in available anymore meaning bringing these animals back um, there's ethical concerns of well, are these animals just going to sit in zoos for their entire existence? We're not going to be able to release them again. And then also, if you do release them, they immediately become probably the rarest animal on Earth and the yeah. biggest target of poaching. Have anyone seen modern rhino conservation? A yeah. big thing about it is armed guards around the clock with the rhinos we got. And even that is not always 100% effective. Um, so protecting these animals once you do resurrect a species is not easy. And that method of resurrection has yet to actually be done, so it's something where it may or may not actually work. And again, it is always probably better to focus on the animals we have rather than look at the past and go, let's bring that back. We should take care of what we have now, because those animals are in danger a lot because of us and what we have done to the ecosystem and our planet. Um, any other question about these? So, I think the thing I didn't cover about them is that their senses. These rhinos would have had relatively similar senses to, like, a modern one. Pretty bad eyesight. Uh, for those that don't know, rhinoceros can see, like, about 15 feet and not very well. And past that, they really can't see. They're very nearsighted animals. Um, and they also have very good senses of smell, though, and decent senses of hearing. So, was their main sense smell? It probably would have been a mix of smell and hearing to kind of navigate the world outside of where they could see a little bit their senses much like we talk about here at the science center when we talk about the snakes not having the same focus of their senses as we do these rhinos would have been focused a lot more again on hearing and smell uh, modern rhinoceros are very much the same way um, they don't really visually recognize stuff often as much as they recognize a the smell of a person they know or another rhino uh, the other thing about these that's kind of cool is there's evidence they were slightly more social than modern day rhinoceros potentially living in small family groups uh, but there's also currently a lot of research into how social modern rhinoceros are given there's so few of them it's tough to study that um modern rhinoceros there's a lot of evidence they may at one point or may still be a little bit more social than we give them credit for they're not quite the solitary animals we tend to perceive them as but yeah, so these animals may have gone extinct due to a combination of habitat change and hunting from us. Which is going to be a trend for a lot of animals from the last ice age. Habitat change and human hunting are really oppressive to species populations, especially slow breeding animals. Any other questions about rhinoceros or in general? Like, Because we can look up stuff just about rhinoceros in general. We haven't covered those animals and we're jumping right into the extinct one. So how many, like, different types of rhinoceros, rhinoceros are still alive right now? Well, we can look up, so we're going to well, look up it? what's called the extant species, which are the still living species of rhinos. Isn't it the, um, northern white rhino that only has, like, two left? Yeah, that's the northern white rhino. Yes, so there are, uh, certain subspecies of rhinoceros that, uh, one of them is not only functionally extinct, I believe recently, uh, the last male northern white rhino went ex yeah. went and bit the bucket and um unfortunately uh that species is going to be really tough to recover they can hybridize with the other subspecies it's related to but again it will never be the same yeah. well like hybrids can't breed with each other right not always but like, in very closely related species especially a subspecies of one species they typically can uh we, we're probably going to wind up doing another live stream on hybrids sometime uh, if we haven't already, that's something that for those at home to check really quick. Uh, so let's 
So let's see. Extant species of rhino. So there are, I believe, four species. Yep, so there are four living species of rhino. There is the white rhinoceros, the Sumatran rhinoceros, the black rhinoceros, and the Indian rhinoceros. Also, I think called the Javan rhino sometimes. And there are various subspecies of those, but currently there's not a lot of them left of any of those species. Rhinos are a species that do well generally, but we are a really effective predator of rhinos, and we have been since the Stone Age. So they oftentimes when they overlap with humans, their populations get a little bit low and then endangered. Any other questions about rhinos? Or any other facts you think that might be good to like go over really quick before we end the live stream? I don't know. Anything? Okay. Does the chat have any questions? No. Nope. Oh god, I can probably guess it was uh Okay you two. Well, uh, in that, if that's the case, we're gonna wrap up. Uh, feel free to come on down to the Hevelar Science Center uh, when you get the time and we're open. And please, again, it is winter. 